Well, this is this is exciting for me. This is a bit of deja vu because you folks have been on the ASP.NET community stand up quite a bit lately. Indeed. Um, yes, we are part yes. of the recurring cast. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So I'm guessing um, a lot of amazing stuff in ASP.NET. Of course, one of the big things I've been keeping an eye on is OpenAPI 3.1 support. Is that yep. kind of the main thing you folks want to talk about? Yeah, so I, I, I want to go through some of the other items, and then I'm going to turn it over to Safia to do a demo of the OpenAPI 3.1 support. So okay. what, what we've got on screen here is the release notes, and we're going to talk about probably the first four or five of these. The first one is the OpenAPI 3.1 support. OpenAPI 3.1 is... But numerically, it's a minor release of OpenAPI, but it's actually a major release. Um, and you'll see why as uh, Safio does her demos, but there's a lot of really important new features in here. There's uh, nice capabilities to better describe your API with OpenAPI 3.1, and that's why we think it's important to, to bring that support. Um, but there's also some breaking changes because some of the underlying dependencies that we have have changed in order to uh, accommodate these things, and that's going to wind up having some breaking changes. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to put this in one of the first previews for .NET 10, so you could get lots of experience with it. You could give us lots of feedback, tell us where we've messed it up, you know, and then we'll fix it. Uh, so, um, so we wanted you to to really see this. There's lots of good detail in the in, in the what's new document here about what's changed and what the breaking changes are. So have a look through that, uh, and Safi is going to show you a little bit more about that. Uh, we're also adding support to generate OpenAPI documents in YAML format, uh, and that's basically by just uh, adding a, a parameter on your uh, map OpenAPI that has a YAML suffix. It can actually be either YAML or .yml, and that will tell us you want that in YAML format, and we'll generate that for you in YAML. Um, there's a new feature to uh, that lets you put a description on the responses of uh, of your operations in the Open API document. It's uh, it's a new parameter on the produces response type attribute. You can see an example of it here, uh, and and this is how it comes out in the generated Open API document. And this was a contribution from a community member. So uh, thank you, Sander, for uh, contributing this. There's a new feature that will take a URL and tell you if that URL is a local URL. And that's important to know because if you uh, are doing redirects, you want to uh, avoid doing redirects to absolute URLs because there are some security problems there. So, uh, so we have this new redirect HTTP uh, is local URL, and that will tell you if it's local or not. And this was also a community contribution by uh, uh, Martin Costello. So thank you for that. Awesome. Um, I, I've just noticed a lot of contributions from Martin Costello over the past <laughs> couple of years. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. He's very active and, and we are very thankful for that. Cool. Um, and finally, uh, the, the, there's more to talk about, but, but the, the last thing I'm going to cover today is some improvements that we've made to integration testing for apps with top level statements. Uh, this was a little uh, glitch when we introduced the top-level statements, where uh, initially the program that we that we uh, generated for you uh, was not public, and that made it difficult for your tests uh, test cases to import that and be able to see that. Uh, and so, in .NET 10, we've added some some support to uh, using source generation actually expose that. Uh, so that your test classes can see it. Um, and we also have an analyzer that will tell you when you've added sort of the workaround for this, this public partial class program, that you don't need to do that anymore because we're going to do it for you. So that's just sort of a whirlwind tour of some of the key things that we've put out in preview one. And now I'm going to turn it over to Safia for a little bit more of a deep dive on the OpenAPI 3.1 support. Yes. Awesome. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yep. Sweet. Sorry, I totally just like infinite screened you all for a little bit there. <laughs> um, cool. So I wanted to talk about support for OpenAPI um, 3.1. Um, Mike did a really good setup for this. Um, 
OpenAPI 3.1 is a minor version of the specification that came out four years ago. But even though it's a minor version, it contains a couple of like major changes specifically. Um, the OpenAPI specification moves to adopt, um, I'm not sure what draft number it is. Mike probably remembers it. 2020 uh, 12. Yes, that version of the JSON schema as opposed to the OpenAPI specific superset that it was using before. Um, so in collaboration with the Microsoft OpenAPI package folks, um, if you're not familiar with that package, it's kind of like the underpinning for how OpenAPI is represented in memory and serialized in a bunch of different places. Kyoto uses it, Microsoft ASP.NET Core OpenAPI uses it, Swashbuckle uses it. So this is a pretty critical ecosystem package for OpenAPI. They've been going on this journey to bring in um, OpenAPI 3.1 support and kind of react to the breaking changes in that specification. And so .NET 10 Preview 1 is the first release where we consume the new major version of that underlying package, which I think is 2.0 preview 4. That's what we're shipping with in preview 1. Um, it's a major version. It does contain breaking changes. So although there's going to be like some delighters in there, there are going to be some things that will change or that you need to migrate and we'll kind of talk through um, those a little bit. So what I've got on my screen here, um, it's one of the sample apps that we use a lot for demoing the training API. It's a simple like REST API service to model um, managing clients and personal trainers in a gym. We update to 10.0 preview one packages that just came out today. Um, nothing much changes in our application if we head over to our program CS. Um, we can see we're still using all of the API methods that we introduced in .NET 9 to add built-in OpenAPI support. We've got add OpenAPI here, map OpenAPI. Um, I'm using Scalar UI as my OpenAPI visualizer in this application, so I've got the call for that. All pretty standard stuff, nothing changes, but the net effect of it is if we pop into our document, we will see here that by default documents now get serialized to OpenAPI version 3.1.1, um, which is the version that uses the like new draft of JSON schema. Um, if we take a peek at the underlying OpenAPI document that we generate, we will start to see a little bit of a hint of some of those breaking changes. So one of the big breaking changes is that JSON schema models nullable types by using an array um, value for the type attribute in a schema. Um, so if I have a nullable integer, it gets modeled as a type array of null and integer. Um, this is distinct from prior versions of OpenAPI where there was a nullable property that you would set on the schema to indicate that it was null. So the, the changes are kind of subtle between the two because previously JSON schema or previously the schema that was used in OpenAPI was a superset of the JSON schema definition. Um, but there are kind of these like subtle changes in, in the resulting document. Um, Mike has been doing an exploration to try out OpenAPI 3.1 spec documents with all of the different client generators and tools to kind of get a sense of who supports OpenAPI 3.1, who doesn't, like kind of um, seeing ecosystem adoption for it. Um, some of the breaking changes that you will encounter, as we mentioned, are at the Microsoft OpenAPI layer. So that's the layer that we use to model the OpenAPI document in memory. Um, and we're working on migration docs for this. You should see these coming up soon, um, but I wanted to kind of peek behind the curtain and show you a little bit of what changes here. And we can see that if we take a look at our transformers. Um, transformers are constructs that we introduced in .NET 9. They allow you to mutate the OpenAPI document. And because you're mutating it, you're interacting with that in-memory type that the Microsoft OpenAPI package provides for us. So subtle changes include how we model examples or default values. Um, those now use the JSON object type that's provided by system text JSON. So they're modeled directly as JSON nodes. Um, Previously, they were modeled with a custom set of types exposed by the Microsoft OpenAPI library. I call this out as an example because I know 
folks love to like set examples um, for types in their open API documents. It makes it easier to integrate with testing UIs that will frequently pull the example you set in the open API document and use it as like the payload that would be sent if you are using um, something like like a Bruno or a, or a Swagger UI. Um, so some of that is going to change and you're going to have to like react to those breaking changes. Um, it will kind of be fun. Um, the migration docs will hopefully be there um, to help you with those changes. But one of the great benefits is that we're working with the Microsoft Open API team to not only support 3.1, but also to improve the memory footprint of the package. Um, there are lots of places where we can reduce allocations and make sure that if you're uh, maintaining multiple versions or multiple Open API documents within an application, um, there's a smaller perf footprint. Um, we're also looking at improving the API experience. Um, and looking at, hey, um, there's this API that existed in version one. Can we take a chance at um, revising how it works in version two now that we have the opportunity to make breaking changes? And that's kind of the segue to say um, and encourage everybody to try this out um, and help us give feedback, not just at the ASP.NET core layer for how we interact with this new breaking change, but also for the underlying dependency and um, kind of help us improve the, the like ergonomics of the API there and also the, like the performance and, and the memory footprint. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty exciting change. It's also kind of gonna be the underpinning for future open API improvements in .NET 10 um, that I hope people will enjoy. Um, but yeah, fun stuff. This is great, and I love how you call this out that there are potentially breaking changes in your in your applications, and that's part of the whole preview cycle. Yes. Is like the preview cycle, this is a time where you can start also like revving up your applications, testing them out, and be ready as .NET 10 hits. And then if you hit issues, you can let us know and we can make sure that we're working with you in the ecosystem. So yeah. 